welcome back for another video here on our uh, channel about how we built our overland camping trailer. It's been pretty fun to build and now we're getting to the point where we want to add some stuff to it. Uh, so today we're going to build a solar shower. Um, specifically we want the solar shower for our dog when we're out camping and she gets muddy or decides to go for a swim and gets all dirty. Uh, but we also have a baby and so sometimes you get blowouts on on the road or while you're camping and just having an easy way to wash them off. Um, we are going to be cautious about how hot that water gets because I think in this thing it will get pretty warm. So we'll be cautious of that if we need to add in some water from our cooler or some ice or something to cool it down a little bit. We will take care of that. It also come in handy when we're doing dishes. Uh, being able to wash the dishes on the road would be really great. Um, pretty sunny out today, um, but I just want to show you the process here. Um, I'm pretty excited about this. This is one of the accessories that I have been looking forward to building for the trailer. So this is everything that uh, I need to make this, I think. Um, we'll see as I go along if I've forgotten something. So to start, we have a four inch piece of ABS pipe. These come in 10 foot sections. We will probably only use about six and a half to seven feet of it. Um, just because I don't want to stick out on the trailer too much. You will need some glue for PVC or ABS pipe. Uh, this is primer and cement. So you need both of those. Got this little four inch coupler here with a little two inch pipe on top. This is going to be our fill spout. So I got a little two inch plug here um, that we can take out. So this piece here can come out. So this will be glued in to the top here. Then we can undo the top here to fill up the shower. Also, on the front end of the camper, I'm going to have this piece. And this piece also comes out. Um, it's kind of in there tight right now. I can't do it with one hand. But this will come off the very end so we can actually get in there and clean uh, as best we can. Um, I got some epoxy putty for where we'll have our our uh, spigot. This is um, a drain for a hot water heater. Um, so we have that. We have a little coupler that we're going to use on the backside as the nut because I couldn't really find a nut for this specific threading. Uh, so I just bought the coupler instead. So that will be drilled in to this cap here of a three quarter inch hole. The spigot will come in from the outside and then our coupler will come on the back here and, th and thread right onto that. I'll show you that process. A um, couple of uh, hose clamps. These are, I think, five or six inch hose clamps. And those are to actually mount the shower when it's done. Um, we got my measuring tape for any cuts that I need to make on the pipe. I'll be cutting the pipe with um, just a, a sawzall. I don't have an, another like a hand saw or anything. I, I could use my circular saw, but I felt like the sawzall would actually do just fine. Got some tape just to seal up any threads really well. Uh, these are valves that will also go in the cap here. And uh, this is to pressurize. So this is just a, a Schrader valve for like a car tire. Um, so it will be mounted right here and we'll be able to pressurize the whole chamber using a little 12 volt uh, com air compressor. Um, I had to buy a new bit. I have a, a bunch of bits here but I needed a three quarter inch bit. So tools I'll need are this sawzall. I've got a couple different wrenches here for tightening uh, different threaded components. And then I'll need my drill to drill the holes and then an extension cord. And that should be everything that you'll need for this build. So to start out, we will cut our pipe down to size. So I'll start by cutting my six and a half foot piece. Okay, now that I've cut my pipe to length, I'm also gonna cut right where my coupler is gonna go. So this coupler is gonna go right about here um, for the fill up spot. Now that that is done, we'll install our T. So we've got primer 
and cement. This primer really just cleans and preps the surface. It starts to really eat away at the material even. And that really is just going to help the glue the cement adhere once I put it on. And then here's our cement. Add our cement. Really want to make sure you just get plenty on there. You hate to have a, since this will be slightly pressurized, you really don't want to get any leaks in there. So make sure you're glued up really good. Little trick of the trade here is to put something underneath your pipe so it's easy to get all the way around without having to hold it up with your hand. Okay, get your pipe, make sure it's the direction you want it. Stick it on like so. So there's our fitting right there. It's all the way in. I probably could have gone even a little heavier on the glue. But we should be good. Now that we've got that installed, I think I'll go ahead and put this other piece of pipe back on here as well, and then we'll be ready to put our cap on the end. Prime, prime, prime. Really, I should be wearing gloves doing this, but oh well. I used to build the irrigation systems. When I was working as a teenager and a little bit in college. So, been around this stuff a lot. So, shove them in there and give her a little twist. There we go. Alright. So, this will be our fill up spot. I'll glue this in in a little bit. That might be one of the last things I do. Let's go to the front end. Here, I'll just slide this down and we'll install the, um, the cap. So something interesting about this cap is it actually fits inside the pipe. And it's not super tight, so I really am going to load this up with a ton of glue. I'm making a mess. This thing's just going to shove right in there. Just like so. I like it when my glue oozes out just a little bit. Okay, so this stuff says allow 15 minutes before you uh, really can handle it too much, um, and then two hours to cure before you can uh, pressurize it up to 180 PSI. All right, we'll move this out of the way and we'll start working on our uh, valves at the end for water and for air pressure. Okay, so this is a part that I'm not 100% comfortable with. I've never done something like this before. Um, so I'm going to be drilling through our end cap here to install our, our spigot. So this is a 3 quarter inch size here. You can see that there. That's 3 quarter inch. So I want to have it as close to the bottom as possible so that it can get all the water out. But also I need to make sure I have enough room for my coupler here. On the inside, which is just act, acting as a, a nut. Fits just perfect. I will be putting some pipe tape on this to make sure we get a good seal. So first I'll work on this bigot, then we'll put in our pressure valve, which really can be anywhere on this. Probably put it up high to stay out of the way. Okay, like I said, I should have been wearing gloves this whole time. Cut my hand pretty good right there. Gloves are an afterthought now. Okay, so there's our spigot at the bottom. So we want to make sure that this is going to fit because it kind of looks like it might be too close, which sucks. So we can make this work. Probably don't need a ton of this tape, but it's not going to hurt. Okay, well, now that I got this tightened on there pretty good with the pipe tape, 
um, I will be putting on the epoxy to just try and seal it up really good around the edges. I'll do the same thing with the outside. Okay, this stuff should be all set up now. I've let it sit for about 20 minutes. So now that we have that on, uh, we will go on and we will put in our our valves here. These are Schrader valves. Get it at AutoZone. Ooh, that is freaking hot from being out in the sun. Okay, so that fits on pretty good now. So what I'm going to do now is I'll get my uh, washer and nut here on the outside and this will really suction everything, pull it all together, should make it nice and tight. Okay, just two simple steps left to um, make the shower and then we'll just need to mount it on the trailer, but um, we just need to glue this piece on the end here and then we'll glue our fill spot on the top as well, which has this uh, seal. So we'll take this off when we're filling it up, um, but then you know, when we're using it, when it's pressurized, it'll need to have the cap on right here. So, that's what we're working with. We'll put it on, give it a little twist, turn. I think that's about as far as we're gonna get it on. Next piece we gotta glue in real quick is this one. Okay. So that should be nice and glued in. I took the cap piece out um, and that was just to not have the pressure of the chamber pushing out now that everything's sealed up. I probably could have just opened my valve, but... Okay, so now we'll let everything dry up. And uh, I might pressurize it on the ground just to make sure we have uh, no leaks before I put it up on top of the trailer. Okay, I've filled up the tank here, and it's, it's completely full. I'm not seeing any leaks without pressure. We'll see what happens when I add pressure. I don't think the glue's completely set up, so this might be bad, but I'm not very patient. glue wasn't set up. Okay, round two. I've cut my ends off so I can start over. Uh, this time I'm just gonna put a full solid cap on the end. I won't be able to get in there and clean from the end, which I'm just gonna have to deal with. Cut off the ends there, I cleaned them up pretty good. Um, put my cap on this end, and then on my other end we'll put a new spigot. But for now, I'll glue this piece on. And this time I'm gonna wear my gloves so I don't cut myself or get glue all over myself. I'm also gonna let everything set for a lot longer this time. I'll check the instructions again and make sure, probably do it for an hour and a half or two hours.
Okay, everything's been glued on. I took this cap out to keep it, to release some pressure so I wasn't pushing the glued pieces off. I'm gonna let this sit now for probably two hours because I don't want it to blow again. My only other worry is that this isn't gonna seal enough to keep the air pressure and water pressure in. So I'm gonna have to really tighten this down or find a different solution here. Okay, this is attempt number two. Oh, there's water coming out there. So yeah, this is attempt number two to get this to work. Everything's been redone. Redid the end here. Redid this cap. Redid the cap at the other end. I tightened this down more, so hopefully. And now I'm gonna fill it up to about 25 PSI and let it sit for probably 10 minutes or so. Okay, that's 25 PSI. And I'm getting a little bit of a leak right here. You can see that. So this is my biggest issue now is getting this thing to stay tight. Now it's probably going to be okay. Well, see, I've already lost about 20 pounds of pressure. It's dropping back down to zero pretty quick. Okay, I don't have leaks anywhere except for right here. It's just a very slight leak. So maybe what I'll do is put some Teflon tape on it. See if that helps. I don't want to do that because I have to tape it up every time. But that might be my only option right now. Okay, attempt number three. Now I've put Teflon tape on this threaded section, so hopefully that will seal things up. So I'll go up to 25 PSI, let it sit for a minute, and then maybe go up to about 50 PSI. Okay. That's 25 PS right there. Not getting any leaks around the seal here. No leaks on the cap that has the pressure valve and the spigot. And it looks like the other end is doing just fine as well. So we're gonna let this sit for a little while before we turn on um, the compressor again to get more PSI in there. Okay, it's been about five minutes at 25 PSI. So we're gonna go ahead and go up to 50 and we'll stop there um, and we'll let it sit for five minutes or so, make sure we don't have any leaks. And uh, then we'll empty this thing out and put it up on top of the truck or on top of the trailer. Okay, that's 50, no explosions, no leaks. So we'll let it sit for a few minutes and then we'll uh, hook our hose up to get all the pressure out and the water out and make it a little lighter to put up on top of the trailer and then um, tomorrow we'll do a little test we'll fill this up with water in the morning and we'll wait maybe four hours or so and see how hot the water gets so this is 50 pounds of pressure put it on the jet setting 50 pounds of pressure Okay, the last piece of the puzzle is to tighten down these uh, hose clamps, big hose clamps. Okay, now there it is all done pretty cool and got our valves on the back here so tomorrow we'll fill it up with water and uh, pressure and test it out okay so I'm gonna fill this up all the way it's about 11 o'clock in the morning. I'm gonna let it sit for four or five, maybe six hours. 
we'll see how hot the water gets. Okay, so we're getting about 80 degrees on there, more or less, it keeps going up and down. But 80 degrees is the water right now. Okay, it's the heat of the day. It's been four hours. So let's take this thing off and see how hot our water got in four hours. It's probably like 90 something degrees today outside. So this pipe is super hot. So it's currently 115.3. Let's see how hot it is. Honestly, that just feels like a nice toasty shower. It's not too hot, you're not gonna burn yourself. It is real warm though. So I think, just depends on where we're at and how hot it is outside. And um, if it's down here in the valley where it's so hot, I think we'll have to be a little more careful, but maybe when we're up in the mountains it won't get so hot. You know, 110 degrees isn't so bad for a shower. So I would say that that is a success. I'm gonna pressurize it and then um, hook the hose up and see how it does. Okay, well, the solar shower ended up being a huge success. Really happy with it. Can't wait to take it out on the road, up in the forest and, and test it out. Have a big road trip coming up this week where uh, Ava, my dog and I are gonna be driving out to Indiana and Michigan and looking forward to maybe testing it out there. And then the whole family will be driving back uh, to Salt Lake from Indiana and we will be stopping probably about um, somewhere in South Dakota probably, see Mount Rushmore, head over to Wyoming. Should be a fun little adventure. So keep tuned for that video and uh, let me know if you have any questions about the solar shower over there and I'll try and answer as best I can how I made it or if you're running into any problems, uh, let me know and maybe we can uh, troubleshoot it together. We'll uh, see you soon in our next video.